Hello, thank you everyone for joining us today on the Force 4 live stream. My name is James Tudor Williams from Force 4 Channery and joining me today I have Toby Price, the Head of Technical Support from Luma. Hi James, thanks for having me. No worries, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sure a lot of people tuning in watching this are very aware of who Luma are, the brand and what they do, they have a great range of marine products and boat hardware. Um, today, Toby and I are going to focus about talking about their winches, particularly the Evo and Ocean range. Um, Toby, again, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, as mentioned, you are the head of technical support at Luma, and, and I'm sure a lot of people know all about Luma, but for those who may not be that familiar, can you just give us a brief background or introduction onto Luma and some of the products they do? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, we're, we're predominantly a, um, a manufacturing company that specialises in marine hardware. Um, we started out with small Tufnel blocks and uh, small winches and have grown and grown and grown um, to the point where we cover virtually everything across a sailboat and a motorboat from hatches, winches, uh, deck hardware, um, bathing platforms, you know, absolutely everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Hydraulic systems, you know, you name it, we'll have a go at it. I was going to say, you name it, we, you name it, we do it as well. Yeah. yeah bow thrusters, steering systems, everything. You've got uh, yeah. come from a bow to stern. Um, <laughs> so, just want to say, if anyone out there has any questions at any point about uh, the Lumar range of products, uh, any at all, and in particular, obviously, the winters, whilst we're talking about them, feel free to drop us a question in the live chat. If you're not watching live and you've tuned in on YouTube or on our Facebook pages, uh, drop us a question in the comments and we'll see if someone at Luma or Force 4 can get back to you. Um, Toby, right, let's get started. Uh, we're here to talk about Luma winches today. What yep. are the sort of range of Luma winches that you produce and uh, what are the main differences between them? So ultimately, um, we have, yeah, uh, as you can see on screen, they are, are smaller Evo Ocean winches, uh, sports winches, and then they are our larger ocean self-tailings, and they are our Evo self-tailings. Um, the Evo and the Ocean are the two main winches that we do. Um, they're ultimately the same winch internally. Um, you know, winch design hasn't changed for about 60 years, so um, the internals are very much the same. What has changed is the aesthetics. So okay. the Ocean winch is a traditional um, looking winch that you'll find across a lot of sailboats and the Evo range is the newer smarter slightly racier looking um, slightly shorter winch uh, which is some of the more modern um, sailboats are, are fitting okay nice um, so when someone if that, that's the winches you have to choose from aesthetically you're looking at like the ocean traditional or the Evo sort of small sporty sleeker yeah. How does a person actually go about selecting a winch? What does a boat owner have to consider uh, when they're trying to make the right choice of winch for their boat? Sure. So it, it all comes down to application. Um, the same winch can do multiple functions across the boat, depending on what it is. So, you know, for a jib, um, it's jib, jibs are generally one-to-one. -one. You're pulling directly on the sail. You might need a larger winch than an example for your main sheet um, that might be running a four to one system or you know if it depends whether it's end of boom mid boom uh, or a german main sheet system you know you uh, you mostly would need a smaller winch for, for that application so um, we have a we've got a guide that kind of gives you a, a a guide based on your boat length kind of dictates how tall your mast is therefore you would have roughly a certain size rig and we try and give you a good estimate of what winches would suit what application um, okay. depending on, on what you're trying to do with it oh nice so so you, you know it's to, like say you're covering location there the loads it's going to be under loads is dictated by the sail size and then rope size i guess it isn't such a huge factor but it comes into it when you're sort of no, exactly. I mean, our winches um, have sprung loaded jaws, so all winches have a fairly decent range of rope capabilities. Yeah, oh, on nice. average, somewhere between 8 to 12 mil, 14 okay. mil on the bigger ones. Um, so, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll accept different ropes because, uh, we're you know, you don't have the same size lines for all of your controls. So, yeah. Okay, that's good to know that, you know, if you, your winch does cover a lot of, the winch that you pick, regardless of if you've spec it for the top end, can man, obviously manage the other end in terms of loads, but also in terms of lines and stuff like that. 
Absolutely, yeah. Nice. Um, so once your boat owner has picked their winch um, mm -hmm. and they've decided where they're going to install it, how easy is the installation, uh, both from the idea of replacing an existing winch or if you're going in brand new, untouched? So, I mean, if we start with replacing a winch, um, which a lot of the guys will be doing, depending on the age of the winch, um, I mean, unfortunately, with design, um, the whole patterns and the PCDs have changed um, over time. So the, the chances are, if you're removing an old winch, you would have to uh, fill or back, backfill and repair the old holes um, and make some new ones for your new winch. Um, occasionally you get lucky and you can pick up on one or two of the original holes if you're having yeah. a good day. Um, but it all depends on the size of winch you had and, and what you're what you're fitting it with. Um, for fitting a new winch, um, it is really simple. You lift the drum off um, and place it on your deck, mark off your, your five or six holes, depending on, on what size you have, and, um, and drill some new holes, obviously checking the underside of the deck before you go through and <laughs> damage any cables or pipes or anything else that may, uh, may well be under there. Um, Amazing. So basically, it is as easy as literally you need a drill and you drill some holes. Yeah. Um, you, the only thing to bear in mind when you're doing it, it's all to do with the output gear on the winch. Okay. So the line load needs to be coming on. And if I, if you bear me two seconds, well, it's easier to, to demonstrate and try and talk about it. So when you, uh, when you're installing your winch, yeah. this is what's referred to as the output gear. Okay. This is what drives the drum round and round the line always needs to be coming on at 90 degrees to that gear as much as possible um this is because when the load comes on it means that the drum is not forced onto or pulled away from the output gear and it just keeps a nice even pressure on it which means you won't damage the gear teeth or the drum um, okay, yes. when load comes on yeah so the drum won't be pressed against that gear either wearing the gear out or grating against the drum basically exactly that yeah Ah, very nice. Okay. Um, and so it is as easy as drilling some holes, uh, bedding compound, sick and flex, or some sealant or something? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's dealer's choice, whatever you would like to do it. But in my head, you once your winch is on your deck, you're not planning on removing it that often, if at all. So um, I would use a sick and flex or a slightly you know, more, a more permanent um, a bedding compound. I suppose the glue adds a little bit of extra hold to the bolts that you're using with. Yeah. Um, exactly. We always get asked it. I'm sure you get asked it as well. Doesn't come. Does it come with fixings? Is it coming with fixings? No. Again, we we get asked. We we can't supply fixings. Um, we would have to supply them that are 150 mil long, and then everyone has to cut them down because we just have no idea what thickness people's decks are. Every really? boat is different. Every location is different. It's it's impossible to to guess. So, and you know, it'd be cheaper for the customer in the long run just to buy his own fixings to suit right. them. And a, headache, a headache if anyone's ever tried to saw or cut down some stainless steel bolts. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's not a fun job. <laughs> no. Um, so next question then. We've got uh, we've we've decided how to spec or pick our winch. We've got the location, we've installed it, we've been using yeah. it. How often should a person on average, would you say roughly, because obviously people some people are very anal and will do it a lot. Some people don't do it all. But what is the recommended sort of period for servicing your winch? And is it as easy as installing it? Uh, yes, it is. So when it comes to servicing, um, you know, the average cruiser guy who likes his boat goes out 10, 12 times a year, sails it around the Solent or wherever he may be. He, he can happily service his winch once a year. Um, if you're a heavy user or a racer, then we would recommend that you would at least do it twice a year or you would do a mid-year service um, just to, you know, checking, make sure the pulls and the springs are all okay. Um, ultimately, they're the parts that hold the winch from going backwards um, and they hold all the load. So you just don't want to risk the springs failing. And the more you use it, yeah, the more use on the springs, the, the higher the chance of a, a spring potentially going. So, yeah, it's just worth checking. Yeah, it take it takes all of two minutes to check, 
uh, once you've done it once, you'll uh, you you won't be scared to do it again. So nice. So again, how easy is it to do? It looked like yeah. we took it apart very quickly for us. Again, no tools really needed to do it. No, I mean for for genuine standard service, you don't need any tools apart from your hands. I'll um I'll just move the camera down a little bit. Um, on the top, you'll see this is the the top cap that holds the whole winch together. Basically, you'll notice that there are um, directional things in here. These are actually only there to undo the top cap. They're not there to do it up. Should only ever be hand tight because um, it's not physically holding the winch together. It just keeps the parts together. Okay. Um, so it's very easy for you to get a finger or a screwdriver into that cap um, and undo it. And that will just screw off like that. There's a little rubber O-ring in it just to hold it in place. Um, from there, it's really simple. You can get your hand under the feeder arm and in the other side and just wiggle it off. And there you go. That is off. The next thing on the smaller winches, you would have to remove the collets to yeah. allow the drum to pass. Once you get up to the slightly bigger winches, you don't need to and the drum will just lift off like so ah, there you go drum off um and then then you're there you're in your winch there is there's nothing else to it now um the the next step is you would just lift off your bearings and your drum washer nice and they're off that's that um and then you've got your two gear stacks um and again you don't need any tools for that there you can just see here there's pins yeah. These pins just drop directly through the gears into the, the bottom of the sense stem. You can literally just lift one of those out. And yeah, gear stacks are out. That's it. Same on that side. Pin out, gears out, job done. Nice. And then once you're in here, um, so you can hear the gears. There's So within the two gears are where the pulls and the springs sit. Yeah. So this is the part you have to be slightly careful. When you go to separate these, see if i can find them there we go you can just see the pool is starting to appear there yeah you just want to try and keep your fingers on them so that when you separate them they don't shoot apart but yeah there it is that's that's all that is in these winches nothing more to them amazing um yeah. like I say, top tip there trying to keep you keep your fingers on them before you lift that gear off otherwise they're going straight overboard i'm guessing yeah. more often than not I'd, I'd be ashamed to admit how many springs i've lost overboard <laughs> Yeah, but, um, it happens to the best of us. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, and, and that really is that is it. And it, this, this is the exact same, just it's an upside down version of this. Um, so. so, what are you looking for there? I'm guessing you're looking for your pulls to be slightly rounded, like in terms of what are the negative things you're looking for? Pulls to be slightly rounded off and springs to not be very springy. Yeah, absolutely. So, if you witness any burring or bruising on the end of the pull yeah uh, around here that's a sign that it's it's had some load or a heavy life and it should be replaced um and the spring you know it's not sure you can see it in there but the spring yeah, is very right. simple um it will either spring or it won't okay and the minute it doesn't spring you replace it um it, yeah it really is that simple there are a couple of plastic bushes that sit through the center of the gears um, these, these will, if you buy a service kit, you will get replacement ones of those be, just because the load of the gear wears, uh, wears on them. Um, but that's really it. You put a very small dab of oil in with the spring, um, a very light coating of grease on the gears. Yeah. And, and that is it. That is really, that's all you need to do. Um, so when you're greasing it up, because that's the other thing I like you mentioned it there, a light grease, and you would recommend just literally a light brushing of the grease on because some people think more is better, but actually that can be yeah. kind of detrimental to the wick. Absolutely. Uh, it does it really doesn't need it. All you're actually doing is applying a little bit of grease to the surface area of the teeth. If you put lots of grease in there, it acts like a a, a goop and it just pulls any dust and dirt in. And then your winch will start to get grindy and seize up because it's just pulling stuff around with the teeth as well. What we tend to do, um, the quickest and easiest way to do it is put a winch handle in the top, get yeah. a brush, and literally just brush the gears as you turn the winch handle. And once you've done a complete turn, the gear's greased, move on to the next one. 
um, okay. and that really is all as um, all you need to do. The only other part I haven't quite shown you yet is the main spindle, which is in here. This is what's located by the two collets. Yeah. As you, you literally just pull the collets out, like so. Send the spindle out. That is the only other component to this winch, and it yeah. really is that simple. Um, a little tip for when you are reassembling your winch, which catches many people out. When you go to reinsert the collets into the center stem, you think they might be located, but they're actually not. You need to ever so slightly just put your finger in, lift the center stem, uh, the main spindle up, and you'll see the collets drop in. And that's when you know that it's located. And it just keeps this from uh, bottoming out on the gears below. Oh, nice. Yeah, top tip. I see. You could see it. You could see it like actually properly engaged when you lifted it up there and clipped yeah. in. That, that's nice. Yeah. See, if I pull them out again, you'll see it drop. That's it. That's the yeah. So it's it's very small, but no, you won't be able to reassemble your winch if it's not relocated. So you'll soon nice. work. And then again, look, so everything just goes back on top, hand tight, easy, yeah. easy job. Yeah, absolutely. But um, drum drum bearing and then uh, drum washer bearings. Drum just drops back over the top. Give it a little turn. There you go. And um, when you're reassembling, the uh, there's a stripper ring which sits in between the jaws. Yeah. Just see it there. That just needs to sit under the tongue of the feeder arm. Locates on. Then when you're looking down in the top, you just line up the jaw, the the teeth with the collets, and that's that's your winch done. Back together. Easy peasy. Nice. Yeah. Um. Brilliant. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I think anyone should be that afraid of tackling winch servicing, basically. You made it, it made it look pretty easy. Um, yeah, I like to hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned the winch service packs there, which come with the pulls and springs and the, yeah. the, uh, the bushings and stuff. Um, I suppose the only other sort of winch accessory we just haven't gone into is um the Lumar winch handle range uh, can you talk us through any of those got some of those stuff yeah absolutely so we we've got kind of a quite a range of handles um but the one that is always stuck out is they go is the is the one touch um mm. it, it is the simplest and easiest to use um it's intuitive you operate it without even thinking because the release button is the handle so the the sheer act of putting your hand on the handle is what operates the handle it lets it in and out engages it's in there nice and solid got a nice big grip up here so you can get one or two hands on it um yeah i mean you can look at any boat with any equipment on you generally see a loom or handle hanging out the top of it so um that's always good yeah i think i think they're probably the handles that we sold most of and again like you say having that one touch one-handed means in rougher conditions or wherever you are, you've got a hand free to brace yourself, hold yourself, and you can still get the handle in without having to piddle with anything. So that's yeah, quite good. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think we've covered basically winches top to bottom, but is there anything that, that you think that's worth mentioning that we haven't spoken about? I mean, what I can show you is what I've got here is just, um, is the people quite often sometimes ask about the electric winch setup. Um, and what the difference is. So, for example, if you have um, an, an Evo winch um, or an Ocean winch, actually, you can convert them very easily and simply into an electric winch. Okay, like, nice. Like so. So the winch part here is exactly the same. What you're doing is you're adding this base here. The winch bolts directly to the base. The base is then driven by the motor gearbox underneath. Yeah. Um, you know, it's relatively compact. Um, we do retrofit kits. Um, um, so if you've already got a manual winch on board and you decide you want to go electric, it's um, it's pretty easy to add. Um, just you just need to put one slightly larger hole in your deck for the for the drive shaft to fit through. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, it, it's very simple. Yeah, that's good to know that if you've got a winch of a certain size and you're thinking. So I think it's from size 40 up for most of them. Yeah, yeah. 40 is, and 40 is the smallest we do in electric and then everything Yeah, so if, you've got, if you're thinking of installing a winch and you want it to be electric, the only thing to consider is, um, or powered, sorry, is to consider space for the gearbox underneath and then you can know somewhere down the line if you wanted to, you can make that uh, powered yeah. winch, which is quite cool. Yeah. 
Um, I suppose the other thing that I think is worth mentioning that uh, we haven't touched on is the fact that nearly every single component that winch from top to bottom, uh, it, you, you do a spare for as well. Like, Yeah, absolutely. There isn't one part that you can't buy. The service kits are readily available, but all other parts can be you know, can be got, um, you know, I said the winches, they, they haven't changed in, you know, a long time. So we use the same parts, slightly different configurations, but ultimately it's all the same kit. And yeah, they I mean, they last a long time, but when they do need replacing, they, the parts are available. Yeah, I mean, basically it's, you make that winch sort of ageless because like you said, they've been around for ages, the bits are all the same and they are all available. I know we've got a pretty extensive collection of your spares on our website to support them. And I think it's yeah. great that you, as a company, Luma, do a lot of spares and support a lot of your products like that, from hatches to windlasses and everything. Yeah, I definitely like to think we try. Um, you know, to say it's, it can be hard. We do have a very extensive product range, so supply and spares for all parts of all ranges. But, you know, win winches, absolutely, there isn't a part you can't get. Amazing. Um, Toby, I think that just about wraps it up for our chat then. Um, Thank you so much for giving up the time uh, to talk to us today and take us through winches, the Evo winch and the Lumar Ocean winch. Um, I found it very informative. I think it should give a lot of people the confidence to service their own winches if they were scared before. So thank you for coming and talking to so. us. No worries at all. Thank you. Um, Elise, thank you out there for putting up the pictures, working behind the scenes and making us look good. Um, thank you to everyone who's joined in uh, to watch today or is watching later on YouTube and Facebook. Remember, you can leave us a comment or a question in our comments there and either Luma or Force what we'll get back to you. Um, and we'll see you next time.